So today we're going to talk about a hybrid stepping motor. The hybrid stepping motor uses a neodymium magnet to get more torque. This is not the motor we're going to talk about. Uh, this is a, standing, a standard stepping motor, a tin can kind of construction. Although it does have a feedback on it, differential A, A naught, B, B naught, index, in, uh, index naught, plus five and ground. That's kind of cool. We're going to talk about this little guy. Uh, it looks like just the front part of the motor, but really it's a hybrid stepping motor inside. Uh, so we'll see the shaft move. Um, additionally, we'll mention the uh, SE4, SP4, uh, four axis stepper drive from Copley. Uh, I'm measuring the PWM noise on the case of the motor. Uh, we'll hook up ground and see what, what that does. Um, you know, people are considering all kinds of countermeasures for PWM noise, you know, filters, uh, chokes, and uh, inductors or edge filters, um, common mode chokes, and just clamp on magnetics. But we don't need any of that. We're just going to ground the case of the motor. So let's take a look at uh, hybrid stepping motor here. We have... Um, uh, a paper about this uh, neodymium. So there's a magnet inside the stepping motor. That's how come they get more torque. Because it's not just uh, iron, it's uh, iron with a neodymium, iron boron high energy magnet. Uh, stator enhanced magnets, 30% more torque. That's why we use magnets. We get more torque. Doesn't affect the speed, that's the winding stuff, but. We'll take a look at that too. Um, more torque, blah, blah, blah. So the standing stepper motor, just the teeth, and it generates a north and a south field. You know, there's no magnets, right? The currents produce the, uh, the field, which produces the, makes the iron magnetic, which then attracts or repels. But with some enhanced stators, you got some magnets, you, you know, increase the, uh, the flux and um, maybe a, a smaller gap or something too. You, you get higher flux density, uh, more torque in a smaller gap. Uh, but those are the basics for the hybrid stepping motor. And again, I found this cute little one here, hybrid stepping motor. Uh, it was cheap, 50 bucks, so I thought I'd try one. It looked like the, just the front of the motor. I'm like, where's the rest of the motor? So uh, no encoder option on this one. It's got four wires. Hey, go figure out how to wire this thing yourself because they don't give you a wiring diagram. I got two bipolar coils. So I use my ohm meter and I look for the resistance between pairs of wires. Um, here's a quick peek at the speed torque curve. So six ounce inches, it's not a lot of torque. And it goes out flat then starts rolling off here. Uh, 800 RPM, pretty flat. They say 1,200 and you get no torque. That sounds about right. Uh, we'll investigate that. You know, you got a design for working in the normal range here. Uh, this is the speed based on 24 volts. If you had 48 volts, yeah, maybe you could hit the 1,200. So I'm going to test it today with 24 volts. Uh, the motor spec, 0 0.9 degree stepper. So that's got 400 full steps. Uh, frame size, 1.5 inches, uh, current, that's important, 0.6 amps of continuous current, 0.708 ounce inches, uh, resistance 4.7 ohms, I'm guessing the inductance is about 4 millihenry, uh, 4 wires bipolar, uh, more specky stuff, dielectric's really high, that's good. Maybe I could use an AC powered drive, but let's stick with 48 as the maximum on this one. It's a small motor. So we'll take a look at the Copley step net and you can see SP2, SP4. Uh, there's EtherCAT, SC4 or can open, right? So the, the plus drives can do Ethernet and EtherCAT. <clears throat> the uh, standard ARM based drives like the STX AC powered, uh, that's that's just uh, your basic um, uh, can open or, or serial interface. Um, so looking at the uh, ME4, 
this this one can do stepper or servo so you know if you want to save a little money get the stepper version if you got like a dc brush or brushless dc with incremental encoder and halls and you got 48 24 48 volts uh, and you want three amps that's three amps peak or continuous just three amps all day four axes of three amps all day with a 48 volt power supply of course we have SP4, SE4 for higher voltage and higher current servo motors. So if you're combining things, um, this makes a lot of sense with little, little motors. Um, so we'll take a look at CME, uh, the basic uh, configuration here, just a rotary motor. I don't have any feedback. There's no option for feedback on this motor. There's no shaft coming out of the back. I didn't see an option for it, but Hybrid stepping motors do have encoders or resolvers or other strange feedback methods, which are proprietary to the five wire motor guys. I don't like to mention their names, but they also make four wire motors that are normal and open source for everybody to use. Um, this is just gonna leave it in can open mode. And then we have the, uh, the data for the motor. You just enter in your motor name, inertia, uh, Maybe things are given to us in metric. So uh, watch the conversion. Ounce inches is different than ounce inches second squared. So, you know, convert it. Uh, ohms, 4.7. I They didn't say the inductance, but I put 4.7 in. And the calculated values came out from the math model pretty good. And then the ounce inches per amp, 0.6 amps. Uh, continuous ounce inches. That would be the torque constant ounce inches divided divided by ounce inches per amp, 0.9 degrees, 400 full step, 4,000 micro steps per rev. That's just 10 times the full step gives you nice, I mean, you could put 40,000 if you want. Uh, you're probably not gonna see any improvement of position accuracy because you don't have an encoder and it's a stepping motor after all. So 4,000 seems to be pretty good. It gets very quiet. Uh, if you did full steps, just like a stepping motor, lots of noise, but with Copley uh, micro stepping, Controlling the current, we're not just slamming on the voltage and letting it ring. Uh, we're very conscious of the noise, and uh, so the Copley is very quiet. And uh, metric, it's 0.05 newton meter, so eh, it's not a lot of torque. Uh, but that's at only 0.6 amps. You could probably do twice that uh, for a second or so if you had to. It doesn't look like that would be a problem. Uh, but I like to keep the peak and boost, run and boost, boost and run the same. Uh, lower hold current if you want. Uh, there's actually hold the voltage if you want, like really no jitter at all. Uh, max smoothness, that's okay when you're spinning. Maybe it's smooth, but you'll bump into the voltage limit. You got 24 volts. You want to squeeze all you can out of it. Go for max speed. Uh, we can check the bandwidth. Uh, I like about a kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. Uh, this has been, I tuned the current loop manually. The auto tuning is pretty good, but it's artificial intelligence. How much does it really know? Um, I just tuned it for a very good step response. And uh, the bandwidth I'm getting out of this, ah, one, two, two kilohertz. That's crazy high, but let's try to go fast. So maybe we need it. Um, after all, it's a 100 pole motor. That's a lot of electrical cycles per rev. Um, so let's keep that uh, very high current loop bandwidth. And we'll take a look at uh, on the control panel, we can enable and disable. Um, you can, if you had an encoder, you'd have to phase it. You could phase it still and determine your direction for positive, but hey, I just wired it and away we go. Testing out a little jog here, perfectly normal. Everything looks good. So let's go to the scope and see how that tunes up. So I'll close it and open it again. Okay, so I already tuned the current loop. We're gonna go right to the velocity loop, velocity profile, uh, actual current, commanded current. And we'll watch the voltage limit warning. Um, we can see uh, this is the speed at which we start hitting the, the voltage limit. So that, that agrees with the graph, it started rolling off. And so away it spins and we'll take a look at, uh, oh, no voltage limit. Okay, so let's go a little faster. Let's do the 
800, which they said they could do. Ah, little, little voltage limit warning. I mean, that's fine. You still get all the current you need to start and stop. And while you're running, you get full 0.6 amps. But I'm going to select max speed and see if it gets a little bit. Uh, you get a little extra voltage for that. Yeah, you know, going in and out of a voltage limit, just bare, that's fine. I mean, you can run this thing, you know, all the way to the, the rated speed with no problem, even on 24 volts. Except, you know, when you're going fast, you generate back EMF and your voltage folds back. I mean, do you really get 24 volts? It's a PWM amplifier, maybe 95% of that, plus some IR drop, 4.7 ohms times 0.6 amps. Uh, so you're you're kind of near the danger zone here. Uh, I didn't hear it stall. It looks good. So let's give it a spin here. Get the camera going. Yeah, so it starts and stops at the same place. I'm doing 10 revs of the motor. Um, I'm just going to slow it down to a thousand. We may hear a little. Yeah, it just sounds healthier. Okay. Um, maybe a little less uh, voltage limit warning. Well, the current's positive, so that's a good thing. I'm going to say this is less susceptible to stalling because you're, you got a healthy amount of current, you get some torque while you're at speed. And of course, when you're at speed, you got the inertia up to speed. You don't really need so much anymore. Uh, but look at the noise. And when you connect the case to ground, the noise goes away. It's like magic, right? I don't need all the fancy filters and stuff. Um, there is something else to note. There's a checkbox for bus clamping, and uh, we'll see how that affects. Hey, it looks better, but except for when I'm spinning, you know, we're kind of back to where we started. We got square waves and stuff. Well, maybe that's better. Um, it's subjective. It just changed the switching technique from center weighted to zero to 100 um, percent. Either way, you know, just ground the case of the motor and any PWM noise problems you have, go away. And if not, we got all these other countermeasures. Look, I connected earth at the drive. That's also very important. That means when I connect this over to the motor case, it's all earth. Of course, the case goes to earth, and the case goes to earth, and the case goes to earth. But earth at the drive for the power supply, so we don't get any uh, difference between the zero volt at the power supply and someplace else, and zero volts at the drive, so earth at the drive. Um, thanks for watching.